All right, guys, welcome back to another great episode of Bass Cast Radio. I'm Brian. I got to keep remembering to introduce myself. I'm Brian, by the way, and this is Hank the Bass Geek over here. You know, I went back and listened to um, my Let's Talk Fantasy Fishing. I never introduced myself in that thing either. <laughs> it's like, you know, I've been doing those live streams and uh, tournament and podcast. And I never thought about introducing myself. It's probably a good thing. I should. Yeah, we need to start doing it because you know it's crazy. There are new people listening, new people coming on, and we appreciate all of you guys for checking out Basscast Radio. Um, man, what a week here at the Basscast.com. Uh, I recorded last night. Let's talk fantasy fishing. Uh, at John Cox on, by the way. Oh, that was an nice. awesome podcast. That was really, we had a, it's actually, guys, I don't say actually too many times. It's 27 minutes long. You can listen to it going to work. Excuse me. And um, it was pretty cool. He actually was like, we broke down, where are you? And he's like, well, this week he's in group A. It's something about when you start, you know, move up and become angler of the year. And, mm. you know, you've got a couple uh, <clears throat> three top 10 finishes and, Lots of great things happening, like that for John Cox this year. So it's an awesome podcast. You guys need to head over and check out. Uh, also, the Bass Cast Kayak Series kicked off its big first event on Smith Mountain Lake. Nice. I want to thank everyone that uh, come out and fish with us. Uh, we had 34 anglers sign up. I know two couples didn't make it, and I understand the weather was crazy, the wind. You guys all watched the live on our kayak Facebook page. Uh, it was actually snowing when I was uh, announcing winners. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. And then, this, then the sun <clears throat> popped out and it was beautiful. So it's kind of crazy. It was one of them days where, you know, it's the the story that I was telling everybody. And I had teamed up with someone in the past. We started a kayak series. He drifted off, did his own thing. But our first ever event, it literally snowed. I mean, it wasn't like a little snow. I mean, it freaking snowed. And I was like, gosh are we kicking off the 2022 season like that i said holy <laughs> cow so there it is that's what's been going on right here um the basscast.com this weekend will be on kerr lake for english choice team tournament trail virginia division men and women uh stop number two and stop number three uh i i like this a lot because it helps me it helps the anglers you get two events one weekend help you get qualified for your chance to take home a brand new ranger boat in the nice. angler's choice team tournament championship at the end of the year and so i only have to book one room and burn one tank of gas instead of two at four dollars a gallon actually it's, <laughs> yeah. went, actually it's went down a lot around here so it, thank it's you went it's went down a little bit here too i think we're we're uh 393 or something like that oh today. it's when it's went down more now here it's mm. a lot more but it's about 25 cent cheaper here so well now we got up to like uh 419 Ooh, you went yeah. a whole lot higher than we did so it's down you know quite a bit oh yes comparatively yeah uh guys i have some awesome news um i've been waiting on this for a very very long time i've lived in my neighborhood for about 10 years now we're getting the sheets at the end of the road. Oh, I Dad thought you was going to say free tacos for everybody. No. I was like, yes. No. <laughs> so what's been going on in your world, Geek? Hey, man, you know, we was out on the water today fighting those uh, crazy, crazy day, man. You know, started out, you know, uh, figured they'd be on bluff walls. Uh, water temps dropped three degrees. Wow. Go right to my first spot, bam, keeper in the live well, and then nothing. His slicks off, they're giving 20 to 30 mile per hour winds with 50 to 80 mile per hour gusts, and it dead slicks. It's like the quiet before the storm. Got a couple of pics on the uh, Instagram where I'm uh -oh. actually making fun of it, and then God punished me. <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of got a he's kind of got a way of doing that. I really yeah. don't understand, but I mean, <clears throat> so the winds come up, uh, but you know, uh, as always, man, we're pumping out content every Wednesday and, and Sunday, uh, five p.m. Eastern time. Okay, uh, dropped a video just yesterday, which might 
include a giveaway possibly oh. i don't know you guys You'll heard have it to here watch first. And see so uh you know just the uh regular bass geek bs i guess there you, there you go <laughs> sorry i was grabbing something but hey. uh we're growing like crazy by the way it's that time again man it is time everybody's out there ready to get fishing yep. ready for this weather to break Hey, oh, man. Yes, check that out. I picked up StarTron while I was at the Bassmaster Classic. I haven't used nice. it yet, but some guy that does some podcasts, I ain't mentioned Luke Duncan's name, gave me this. It's not part of the StarTron family. So, but um, speaking of contests, I told Danielle we're going to drop it this weekend. My boy's Biz Bates. This will be up on Instagram Friday afternoon. I have three packs of Biz Bates. Some new colors from them, the Sassy Stick and a Candy Bug. And the uh, Cutter Crawl and the Bourbon Blaze. And then this is their Dizzy Diamond and the Green Pumpkin 6-inch. Are they ever thrown the Dizzy Diamond? I have not thrown it. It's a pretty freaking awesome bait. Here, I'm going to take it out real quick. What the hell? But check that out. Check out the tail on that thing. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Man, it smells good, too. I know. It's like I got some stuff. I got a lot to give away, guys. And it's all locked up because if it didn't, somebody kill me upstairs because it would be stinking in here. <laughs> stinking. So, guys, tonight we got Christian Greco. He was the winner of the Major League Fishing Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. And guys, by the way, he is a rookie from Tampa, Florida. And uh, that event was on Harris Chain. So I think pretty much, Geek, I think we pretty much got Florida wrapped up. I mean, we're, you know, everybody's starting to move on up. Um, you know, we got some Bassmasters going to be on Tennessee. And, you know, yep. <clears throat> so it's, a, it's a lot of stuff starting to move our way. So really, really excited about that. But, um, guys, again... Mr. Greco going to be on with us tonight. Um, that's it for me for now, man. Let's get him on. Let's talk to him and introduce you guys to him and uh, learn more about who he is and uh, how he won this event. Um, it was a pretty close event. Let me look through here real quick. He finished with 18 pounds, five ounces. And uh, Andrew Loberg from California finished with 16, 13. So, pretty daggone close event right here. And, uh, like I said, that was, yeah, let's see here. The full result, overall, there are 49 bass weighed, 138 pounds, 12 ounces for this event. Shoo. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with Christian. All right. <laughs> All right, guys, we are back with Mr. Christian Greco. Welcome to the show, man. Hey, thanks for having me on. Thank you for talking with us tonight. Uh, first of all, congratulations on the win. Thank you. Thank you. I know you probably took home. You did. You took home. Uh, was that 100000 Yeah, $100,000. <laughs> 100 How old are you, brother? Let's talk about that. Maybe you're like 19 or something. <laughs> 23. You ain't much older than that. Holy cow. 23 years old, $100,000. Are, are you at mom and dad's house? Or are you out, man? Yeah, I'm still at mom and dad's house. Oh, yeah. You're smart. That's what I'm you're talking smart. about right there. there. That is what. It's like mom and dad. Look at this check. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, just, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I just make sense with all the traveling I do right now. I just graduated yeah. college. So, so did you come up through the college ranks then in uh, Florida? I didn't. I went, I went to I went to University of South Florida, which is right here in Tampa, where I, where I live, born and raised here in Tampa. Um, I tried to get a bass team started down here, um, but the, the administration here just really wasn't into it. I couldn't get any support from the school. So uh, I ended up just fishing like ABAs, BFLs, local team events and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So really, I just came up through the BFL level and then jumped into the Toyota series, open series awesome. and uh, qualified for the pro circuit pretty quickly. So you just did it the old school way. Yeah, basically. And I think it I was really gonna, helped me out. 
I was going to say go Bulls, but, you know, no, they wouldn't help you, man. We, we ain't going to give away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they had a they had a fishing club and uh, a lot of saltwater guys, but, like, me and one of my buddies who went to school there, Casey, uh, we were, like, the only ones who really wanted to do the bass fishing, so it kind of just didn't work out. You tell them saltwater don't pay the bills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, aren't there enough guides in Florida? I mean, holy cow. <laughs> yeah I mean, yeah exactly mm, especially in tampa like we got yeah. we have so much saltwater fishing like mm. i'm a pretty I'm, it's pretty rare to uh be pretty much a strictly bass fisherman here in tampa mm. <laughs> oh so that's all you do yeah pretty much i like i'll occasionally go saltwater fishing like if somebody invites me or something like that but i i just focus on bass fishing that's awesome i you actually should... i grew up saltwater fishing i'm not gonna lie it was ponds and saltwater fishing and you know that whole thing right there and I, 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 you know, I had to learn this whole bass thing 15 years ago, but I, for us, it was piers, deep charter boats, you name it. Yep. That was, yeah, I did a lot. I did a lot of that growing up just because it's so easy access to get. Yeah. But then once I, once I got into a bass boat, there was no, no turning back from there. All right. When do you remember getting the old fish and bug? Uh, went, probably I was about 12 or 13. Um, I started fishing some ponds in one of my buddy's neighborhoods from school and we would always go out after school and fish the ponds. And on weekends, we'd spend just like all day fishing the ponds and, uh, joined the Tampa Bay junior bath club when I was 13. They had just started their club down here in Tampa. And that's when I fished my first tournament. And after that tournament, I ended up winning that tournament it was my first ever tournament. I was pretty much just hooked wow. from there. Fishing those ponds in Florida had three ten pounders by the time he was fifteen. <laughs> it was, yeah, it's we got, a different we got world a of, down there. We, we got a lot of big fish in the ponds down yeah. there. <laughs> Gosh! But when I'm doing live streams, I'll have guys and they're like, "Man, I caught a ten pounder the other day." I was like, "Wait a minute, where are you from?" They're like, "Florida." I'm like, "You don't count." <laughs> yeah, so your ten of your ten there's like a five here. I mean, yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, ten's like a three here. What are you talking about? A five? Yeah, it's like, I, it's I, like, man, it's I like live half. in Northeast Tennessee. It's like if I could have caught a, if I could have caught five threes, I can catch. I can finish top five in about every tournament coming and going. <laughs> yeah, you pretty much have to have one fish over eight pounds in your bag to see anything around here. Yeah, <laughs> <Hey, God. laughs> uh, different is, world. That is crazy. So you started out in the junior the junior league, come and moved up through that. Yep. Up until this event, is there one event that was like, you know, besides making it to, you know, like I said, making it qualify for the Major League Fishing, the Toyota Series, was there one thing that really, you know, wow? Oh, uh, probably last year, at the end of last year, I won the BFL Super Tournament on Okeechobee. So that's our nice. two-day BFL tournament. I won that one. So that was, that was my first, like, really nice win. Um, I had my YouTube channel going, so I got a lot of publicity off the YouTube channel, really helped the YouTube channel grow. Nice. And, uh, yeah, so that, that one right there, uh, I actually won an ABA, which I don't know if you guys know, like the ABA open series. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I won one of those in 2019, I think. So that was really, that was my first big tournament win was that ABA and that was on wow. the semi chain. So let me ask you this question. Is your dad fish your mom or no, no no i'm i'm the only one in my family you're the third or fourth my... person we've had on you're just the weird the weird one of the family the weird one <laughs> yeah <laughs> just, but you, that's i'm the same way i'm the weirdo like nobody fishes like my my granddad he you know he he like fished for trout and drank a lot of jackways out on the boat but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, my dad took me fishing when I was a kid growing up, just like off the bank and stuff like yeah. that. But he was he was never really into it. He just did it just to get us out there. But he doesn't he doesn't know anything about bass fishing. <laughs> wow. He's like, don't well, my... throw on that grass, you'll get hung. <laughs> yeah. He's, well, my he dad does it. He knows how to throw a senko around. <laughs> hey, 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 senko king, man! You can't go wrong throwing a senko. I mean. <laughs> I like, probably should have threw one today. Actually, I thought about it all day. I'm like, why am I not throwing a flick shake style Cinco right now? <laughs> yeah, they get bit. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> I mean, say, but yeah, I mean, my, I mean, my dad knows nothing about bass, but wow, I, I, I did go. I mean, we were that was our vacation was fishing trips. 
There you go. Yeah, I grew up in a big baseball family. So like all our, our vacations mm-hmm. growing up, we're going to baseball stadiums and <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So let's talk about this. I said Toyota. I meant to say tackle earlier. Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit event. And you're you kind of do you call Harris your backyard or do you um somewhat, yeah. Somewhat. Like, That's what I thought. Yeah, not far away. Yeah. Not far away. It's about an hour and a half. I consider more so Cassini Chain my home body of water okay. because I have that's where I really have most of my tournament experience. Um, but I definitely, I definitely have a good bit of experience on Harris as well. All right. So how'd this whole thing start off for your brother? How did practice go? Let's start with that. Yeah. So pre-practice before we went off limits, I actually went out one day. I went to Lake Apopka with my one day just to kind of check things out. Uh, the bite was on fire down there. I mean, it was crazy. Like I was getting so many bites. I was catching big fish. I had about 25 pounds in in a day in there and had the bites for probably over 30 so that was kind of in the back of my mind um going down there but of course it's a big risk running down there with all the locks and yes. you never know how many people are actually going to yep. go down there um so did that and then two two official days of practice that they give us for mlf i spent both of those days primarily in harris okay. um, fishing offshore shell bars i hit a few offshore brush piles um, and then hit a few shallow spots and flipping and frogging spots. And it seemed like that shell bar bite was the most consistent and where I felt like I could catch the biggest fish. I caught a nine pounder in practice and then like a handful of three pounders. So I knew if I kind of grinded that out, I figured I could do fairly well. I didn't know if it was the winning pattern, but I knew I could, I could do well if I just sat on a few of those shell bars. So for any of us who've never fished Florida, Describe to us what a what you mean by a shell bar. Yeah, so they're just like muscle beds that are offshore. Um, they're, I guess, their muscles or clams or something like that. Mm-hmm. You'll occasionally get one on your on your line. They're basically freshwater clams, is essentially what they are. And they'll get out across the bottom, and they're filter feeders, so they filter in the plankton and everything else. Minnows will come in on them, and that attracts the bluegill and crayfish and everything else. So it just creates a good little ecosystem. And the bass love getting out there. It's also hard bottom spots where they'll get on. So just everything that the bass really needs to get out there, especially post spawn to just kind of feed up. There you go. So the event itself, guys, it was just a one day event. Um, you, you finished with 18 pounds, five ounces, almost the 20 pound mark. What changed from your practice to the actual event or did anything change or is that what you figure you know if i after practice seeing what you saw if you figured i got 18 or 20 pounds or more i got this thing one yeah it was actually a four-day event so the last day oh four day i apologize that's, yeah that's so the right last that's right day they zeroed the weights i forget about that gosh wow. yes do some crazy <laughs> yeah so days one and two Everybody, the full field fishes, I think we have like 150 some guys in the pro circuit. Mm-hmm. So days one and two is full field. Uh, for day three, you got to be within the top 50. And then for day four, you have to be within the top 10. And then after day after day three, on day four, they zero the weights. And then it's just whoever has highest it's weight a, on the last day wins the yeah. whole thing. Final day shootout. Yep, final day shootout. Yep. So whatever you have on the last day, one through 10, that's that's your final position for the tournament. So, all right, let's go back here then real quick. Day number one, where were you finished after day number one? Day one, I was in 28th place. I had 15, 11. Yeah, you had 15, 11 after day one. And then day two, I think, is that when you came back? Yeah, that, that was my best day. That, that was, I had yeah, 22. Yeah, 2205. Okay, so I remember that press release now. So, yeah, you came back in the big day, day two. What changed 22 days? So day one, I actually ran down to a popka. I was boat number six. Uh, so I figured I'd get down there, see what it was like, um, since I could get in there pretty early. Went down there. We had a cold front the night before. Mm-hmm. It was all windy. Everything was kind of blown out. It just wasn't setting up right. I caught two small fish down there, but I wasn't getting the bites I needed. So ended up abandoning that, ran into Harris, got back into Harris around, I think it was around 1245. I had a 330 check-in. Um, rotated some of my best shell bars, ended up catching the 1511. Um, so day two, went back out, focused primarily on those shell bars, 
had about 18 pounds by one or two o'clock on the shell oh, wow. bars. And then uh, I had a late check in that day. So I had a little bit extra time to kill. So I went up shallow and just flipped around for a little bit, ended up catching a five and a three that called me up to the 22 pounds. Um, so I was leading after day two. And then something and happened then, on day three. Yes. Yeah, so and day three, I only had 11 pounds. Um, I, I think I exhausted my shell bars. The conditions <laughs> weren't, really, weren't really setting up right for them. So I just squeezed into that, that day four top. cut. Yeah, the cut. Yeah, the, the top 10. Yeah. So after that, I kind of knew that I needed to switch something up. Uh, I looked at kind of the weather that night going into uh, day four and the weather honestly lined up perfect for where I wanted to fish on a popka. Uh, it had been warm the, the first three days of the tournament. So the, that water temp was getting back up there. I knew there wasn't going to be any pressure down there. There's only 10, 10 of us fishing on the final day. So I knew I could get down there and uh, fish where I wanted to fish. So just decided to pull the plug on those shell bars and, and make the run down to a popka. And that's where I caught the 18 pounds on that final day. Well, let's talk about the baits, man. Let's see some of those baits that you use to help us uh, secure us a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Tank. So let's see. Oh, the old Guggen. Yeah, the Guggen Slim Shake. That's what I was using on days one through three. Uh, Carolina rigging those shell bars. It's just the black and blue flake um, Slim Shake. Mm -hmm. Just a typical trick worm style bait. And just dragging those shell bars super slow. I tried cranking them. I couldn't get bit on the crankbait out on them. A lot of times you can just crank through them and get bit, but they wanted a really slow presentation. So I had to break out the Carolina rig and just slowly drag for them, but got the job done. And then um, on a Popka, I was flipping the brand new Guggen Nuke Punch. They just came out with that. It's made yep. for punching, but it's really good for any type of flipping. It's got a, a rib okay. body on it. Oh, here, let me pull one of them out for you guys. Actually. There we I'll go. I'll kind of show you guys that. But uh, yeah, so I really good for punching and then also flipping. It's got a pretty thick body on it, so it holds the big flipping hook good. And it's just got these two appendages, so nothing too crazy to get stuck in the cattails and reeds that I was flipping. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the green pumpkin on one side and then purple on the other side. It's a really good color for Florida. You got a little bit of dark, that kind of typical June bug style on the back, and then a little bit more natural hue on that front with the green pumpkin. What pound test line do you like to throw when you're flipping, man? Uh, I do 65 to 80, depending on the cover that I'm flipping. Okay. But I'm definitely at least 65 pounds. Is that braid? Braid, yeah. I use uh, Suff Suffix 832 <clears throat> is, is my favorite one to use. Now, how deep were you fishing when you talk about the Carolina rig? How deep were you fishing that Carolina So rig? those were about 10 to 12 foot shell bars, which is about the deepest that we really get on the Harris chain. There's a few deeper holes, but uh, most of the good stuff is in that 10 to 12, maybe 15 okay. foot range. What size weight and leader were you running on that? Yeah, so I was doing a three quarter ounce weight on that. And then I just do straight fluorocarbon on the main line to a, just another straight fluorocarbon on the on the leader line. I just, mm -hmm. I feel like that mono is a little bit too stretchy. I don't like the hook set on it. I think yeah. it stretches too much. I just like the solid, no stretch or very little stretch fluorocarbon, get a good hook set in there. And uh, I don't really think the, mo the mono isn't floating your bait up or anything like yeah, that. Right. The, hook and the, bait, the hook and the bait weighs it down. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I know that's kind of an old school thing that guys used to do yeah. mono thinking that it, that it'd float the worm, but it's, it's not doing anything. <laughs> no. I was, is that your main two or is there another bait? Yeah, that was, that was pretty much it. Um, <clears throat> that five pounder that I caught flipping the Kissimmee grass. Yeah. Uh, that was on a lunker log, the, Guggenbait lunker log that was really the only kind of variable i threw in there but everything else was um on that slim shake on the carolina rig or the flipping setup on that on that nuke punch um we always ask everyone here what was your takeaway from this event what's something that you learned from you you won it but you know we're always learning something so what was something that you learned from this event uh probably good decision making i mean whenever I had a feeling about something or thought that I should do something, I just went with my gut and did it. I didn't try to force anything. So that was, I've, I've fished a lot of Toyotas in the past um, and other multi-day events where I do good on one day. And then the next day I try to do the same exact thing and it just doesn't work. And I just try to push it, push it a little bit too much instead of, instead of doing something else or going with my gut on what I think they should be doing. So just making good decisions over the course of a multi-day tournament, that's something that, 
I've struggled with in the past, but uh, getting better at it as I go now. Man, you're you're only what you said. You're 23 years old. 23. You had a you had a birthday, right? Just recently, I did. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it says yeah. in a press release you're 22. So, yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> actually, uh, late November was my birthday. So I think on one of them they still said 22. But oh, yeah, 23. Okay, so I was like, Listen, oh, take the 22, just ride Listen, yeah. with it, be 22 for the next 22 years, trust me on this. Well, that is awesome. Congratulations on the win. I, you know what? I actually had a mental breakdown. I forgot that's a four-day event because – and then they reset it. Because here lately, they've been changing – They, I don't know, when was that rule changed? This year or like last year that rule was changed? Or was it this yeah, year? Yeah. Th this year is the first year that that's what I thought that, it was uh, zeroing out of the weights on the final day, just to make things a little bit more interesting on the final day. That TV got to make the TV interesting. Yep. Yep. Got to create us. drama, baby. Got to create drama. Yeah. TV. They got the live stream going. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it helps us with our math too. So we don't have to add up all and all our fingers and toes. So, I mean, <laughs> let's just zero this thing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Just whoever's got the biggest bag on the last day takes it kind of like the, I think they're trying to do somewhat of a BPT format on it. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well, brother, congratulations um, on the win. Uh, where Thank do you, you guys head to next? Pickwick. Uh oh. Some big old. Yeah, but I think I think that's in about two weeks here where we leave for that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna fish the uh, Toyota series on Santee Cooper next week. Okay. And then uh, from there, I think it's about a week after that is when I head to Pickwick for the next Pro Circuit event. So, what's the ultimate goal for you, brother, in this bass fishing thing? Do you want to? Do you want to? You know, do you want to stick with MLF or you want to? You know, maybe move over into bass and. Do you fish the best yeah, I mean, classic happy where I'm, or are you yeah i'm pretty happy where i'm at right now with mlf on the pro circuit um i mean really my main goal right now is, is growing my youtube channel um growing my production value on that and um just fishing as many tournaments as i can really organization right now to me doesn't really matter as much as just getting right. in tournaments and, and putting content out so i mean we'll see we'll see what the industry is looking like here in a few years and and where people are moving to but uh you know, right now I'm, I'm doing well on the pro circuit and we'll see, maybe I end up qualifying for BPT and moving up there. All right, brother, before you leave, man, anybody you want to thank and uh, please give us a shout out to your YouTube channel. That way people can head on over and uh, hit the follow button. And as always hit the uh, notification button, the little alarm. If you just yeah, definitely. This. Yeah. I've been working on my YouTube channel for the past two years or so, kind of documenting my journey. So it's kind of cool if you look back on it, uh, fishing BF bells and abas and then you kind of see me take the leap into the toyota series uh see my success over there and then now making the leap to the pro circuit and uh just uploaded the harris chain video today as we're speaking just a couple hours ago i uploaded days one and two. Oh, um and yeah so i had a camera i've got a camera guy working with me now on, on a few different things so he Man. really killed the edit on on this one it's really great production on this one so if you guys want to check out days one and two those are live on my channel to search my name christian greco uh last name g-r-e-i-c-o on the spelling and i'll pop up there with all my videos i think at this point i've got over 100 videos and probably 95 wow. percent of them 95 percent are tournament videos so a lot of a lot of good stuff to, to look back on mostly uh mostly florida stuff but i fished the opens last year so yeah. a little bit of traveling outside of the state so mm -hmm. got a got some variety on there too no we're gonna have to head on over and follow that ourselves so oh, yeah. he's any sponsors you'd like to thank? Yeah, I, I had a bunch of great sponsors come on board this year, so definitely really, really appreciative of them. Uh, 13 Fishing, Guggen Baits, uh, those are those are the big ones that came on board with me this year. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot to talk about Fish Bomb. I was, uh, this is the garlic spray that I spray on all my Ooh, baits. Oh, so I love I, garlic. Yeah, so that's a UV garlic spray from Fish Bomb. I've been working with them for the past few years. Uh, originally they're in a can, but this is the new bottle that they're working on. So this should be out pretty soon. But what I end up doing on these Guggen baits, they come in the clamshell packaging. I'll mm -hmm. actually empty out a pack or two into one bag and then I'll just spray it down with the, with the fish bomb here and it just marinates in there. So that's makes it a little bit easier. I can condense some packs of baits in there, get them all marinated up all, all nice. So, uh, that definitely helps out. I think, especially on that Carolina rig, when you're, uh, throwing the worm, I mean, they were 
they were choking that thing. So I think that little bit of extra scent and, and smell for them to hold on to could could make a big difference on that, especially especially dragging a worm. I feel like that's really when it makes the biggest difference. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So what's the name of that product again? Uh, fish bomb and fish the garlic bomb. is my favorite, but they got a few different scents. They've got uh crawfish and shad are their other two bass scents. Because I'll be honest, I use the old school and I actually have been, I've had one heck of a time trying to find it. The old gulp, it's right here in my bag to the left. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> the gulp garlic. And you haven't been able to find it anywhere. Really? So that's pretty, I mean, I usually pick it up at Walmart or sometimes I'll find it at Bass Pro Shop, but that's pretty freaking cool. So I will have to remember that myself when I run out. If you had, yep, uh, yep. What, when it cocks uh, the Hey, hey, the one that has the cox juice there, you should have talked to him about it last <laughs> night. Forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think he, I don't know if he's still making that or what, but yeah, he had he had something going on with <laughs> that too. That's crazy. Well, brother, man, we appreciate you coming on. Good luck to you the rest of 2022. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. Hopefully, we'll be seeing you really, really soon out and about. Um, now... I want to ask a stupid question because I don't really know this. You know, we just finished up the Red Crest. I think you can't qualify for a Red Crest, can you? You have to be. No, not. You, you have, have to be, be in the Bass Pro Tour. The Bass Pro Tour. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so they'll take they take the top ten in AOI points of uh, Pro Circuit to the Bass. They get an invite to the Bass Pro Tour. So that that's how you qualify for Bass Pro Tour is top ten in the Pro Circuit AOI. Well, let's hope you make it. Yeah, that's the goal. Uh, I'm in 28th right now after two events, so we'll see what happens. And another, another solid couple of events, and I could be right there in, in contention for that. So, oh yeah, heck yeah. Well, good luck to you, brother. Thank you for coming on tonight's show, and we look forward to talking to you again really soon. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me on, guys. All right, guys, we really appreciate Christian Greco for coming on and talking with us tonight. Uh, congratulations to him when it tackle warehouse pro series event on Harris chain, taking home $100,000 at 23 years old. That's pretty freaking awesome. And he's won a lot. I mean, it's, this is like, it's like, you know, this ain't his, I mean, he's won, this is his first big, big win, but you guys hear it. I mean, heard from him. It's like, he won his first ever event. He fished, uh, he won another event. I mean, he's won like two or three different big oh, events. Yeah. 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 He's got a couple of, a couple, three big wins already yes. under his belt. So, congratulations to him. Long future ahead of him. Somebody you guys need to be following Instagram, mm-hmm. Facebook, YouTube. Like you said, make sure you hit the follow button and uh, watch him in his career. So, excuse me. He's got a great road ahead of him. But, uh, guys, we, uh, Excuse me again. We appreciate you guys watching to and listening to tonight's show. Um, we'll be back next week. Um, we got we got some people we need to hook up with. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, we've had um, Drew Cook won the uh, Bassmaster event. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get we got Big Bobby Lane who won the um, Red Crest, the Red Crest, which is congratulations to him. I think that's yeah. awesome as crap. Bobby yep. now has, I said it last night, say it again. He now has a Bassmaster Classic win as well as a Ray Crest Cup win. So congratulations to him on that. And uh, hopefully we can get one of them two on the show next week. And don't forget, guys, fantasy fishing. Make your picks. Kicks into gear next weekend. Do not forget. I'm still sitting at a 97.3% pick rate. Nice. So, and I'm in fifth place, which is like a shock, shock to me, to be honest. But congratulations to everyone who has claimed prizes, which is only one person. So, I think <laughs> I'll have to make, uh, I think I'll make an announcement next week on uh, Let's Talk Fantasy Fishing when I do make my picks. And I'd be like, at the end of the year, I'm going to do one big giveaway. And it's only to those who are in the Let's Talk Fantasy Fishing group. It's not going to be open to everybody, but just everybody in it to give everybody that's a part of the group a chance. Because the way it's looking, I will have a lot left over if you guys don't claim it. (laughs) Holy cow. So head on over and claim your prize, people. I just need a mailing address. But appreciate you guys. 
thank you for watching and listening as always. We're all we're on all the social, we're on all the podcasting networks, iTunes, Google Podcasts, you name it, Bass Radio. Look it up. Go take a listen today. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you, Geek. Anytime. We'll be talking to you guys really, really soon.